Proton's latest offering has got the entire nation talking about it. It's probably the most talked about topic in 2020 after COVID-19. It is infectious. But unlike COVID-19, you can actually have a go in this to find out if it is worth all the hype. Back in 2018, when Proton introduced the first model after Geely came into the picture, we know what Proton as a brand is capable of, and that Geely produces really impressive products. With their price point undercutting all these competitors, sales figures went off the chart. The X70 became the best-selling SUV in Malaysia instantaneously. We Malaysians love how it looks. It is well-built with quality materials. We were amazed by the high Proton wizardry. And best of all, it comes with a value for money price tag. And now, we as a country, as a whole, expect the same out of this, the second child from the Proton Gili marriage. Locally assembled from the Tanjung Malim plant, it starts from 79,000 ringgit all the way up to 103,000 ringgit with this flagship model. That's a good start, and perhaps that explains the hype. But what are you really getting actually? Don't be fooled by its size because it looks bigger in videos and photos. When it's in front of you, it actually looks smaller. The X50 is a B-segment compact SUV codenamed SX11, which is based on the Geely Binyue from China that goes directly against the Honda HR-V, Mazda CX-3, Toyota CHR, Subaru XV, Renault Capture, and Hyundai Kona. This X50 makes the elder brother looks bad. The X70 now looks a bit dated. The younger brother? It's younger, trendier, sportier, and more hip. And it looks good in this ocean blue. It comes with full LED headlights. I like these DRL lights that turn into signal indicators. The grille, infinite weave design, together with a red accent that's said to be a bow, not a bow tie bow, like an arrow bow. In the middle, Thundercat logo. No, I mean, did I say Thundercat logo? The new Proton logo that you first saw in the CKD X70. This chrome strip that runs across the face. There's just something about satin chrome. It makes the car look more expensive, more contemporary. Down there, double front lip with a carbon fiber look. I like that one. The wheels are 18 inch. I think it is quite the right size. It looks proportionate to the car. When you look through it, red calipers, yo, that's to match the red bow in front. But that somehow looks like a DIY spray paint job though. This badge over here will be the first to go once you have taken delivery of the car. It looks out of place since X70. That's how we describe it. It can go to the tailgate, but not on the side. Unless it's like a V8 bi-turbo batch, maybe. Chrome bits on the side mirrors. Carbon fiber look at the bottom side skirts. This blacked out roof tells everybody that you are driving the top of the range, expensive flagship variant within the lineup with a floating roof design, which I think is kind of overused. You see in the Expander, the Almera, and a lot of other cars. These roof rails look like the one from XC90. Leak. Now from the side, there's probably one part that will make you go yeah when you realize it. Don't you think this rear end looks a bit stunted? But if you look at it straight from the back, it looks great. It's got a sporty spoiler here with vents. Is it self-cleaning though? No, not really. It's got a cute wiper here. This satin chrome strip that runs across with Proton spelt on it looks upmarket. Like Range Rover dah. Down here hot tail pipes yo all functional by the way win but this rear diffuser though is a bit much don't you think When you get into the X50, it will be normal for you to feel the urge to get out from the car to check if you got into the right car. It's okay because it happened to me. Because really, how is it possible? Just, I don't, why is it, are they even charging the right price for it? Look at the leather seats, the dashboard, this brushed aluminium panels, the screen, these buttons, more leather, these stitchings. Panoramic sunroof? Okay, okay, okay. Lang cheng tits, lang cheng tits. The steering wheel has a flat bottom design. 
that is smaller than usual, so it gives you a very sporty feel. Uh, too bad it doesn't come with pedal shifters. Mirror Cluster is fully digital. It changes theme and looks according to your driving modes. I love this dual tone dashboard design with this little wave curve over here. This flagship and premium variants get this larger 10.25 inch head unit, while the others get a smaller 8 inch screen. It runs on GKUI 19 with a 64-bit quad-core processor and a dedicated graphic processing unit. No Android Auto or Apple CarPlay though, just Mirror Link. But it has High Proton Voice Command System. The Advent is fighter jet engine inspired. But sorry, I only see a meme. Yeah, you get that? This handlebar is a nice touch. The climate control setting area, this is just spot on. It looks great, simple, direct, and high quality as well. By the way, when you're seated in this car, you are perpetually wearing an N95 mask because the cabin filter in here is N95 grade. Pistol style electronic gear lever. Not only it sounds great, it is very nice to hold as well. Very ergonomic, I like this. This entire area here looks expensive. There's a slot for your touch and go card, parking ticket. These buttons here look great, looks like it's from Porsche. Two cup holders, there's a little slot here for your phone, which is very neat. Now, this armrest here has a nice weight to it, with a very decent space inside. All this for 103,000 ringgit? I worry for you, Proton. Are you guys charging the right price for all this? There can be only be two scenarios. Either these things look expensive but are actually cheap stuff and won't last, or these things look expensive because they are good stuff and will last. I think you are getting the real deal here. Back here, even though the wheelbase is slightly shorter as compared to the HRV by 10mm, it's actually not bad. This is my driving position. With this seat design cut in this way, I get a lot of leg room. Leg room is not bad. The panoramic sunroof makes it a lot airier back here. These seats are great, very comfortable. Armrest with two cup holders. You get a coat hook on the B pillar. In Malaysia, we call this the nasi lemak hook or the teh tarik hook. Two events, two charging ports. One thing I realized though, this panel over here are hard plastics, while those in front are with softer materials. Other than that, it's nice. I like it. Very comfortable. Check this out, guys. Surprise, surprise! Powered tailgate. This particular unit is optioned with the Urban Package that costs 3,300 ringgit. That comes with the hydraulic struts for the tailgate, boot tray, door seals, and a set of PVC mats. I'll come back to the PVC mats later on. Boot space, 330 litres. It is 107 litres smaller as compared to the HRV. But if you need that 107 litres of space or more, you can always fold down the seats. I don't mind that. Now, to the things I don't like about this car. The door handle design is similar to the one in the X70 and this always happened to me. Yeah. Yeah. Or is it just me? The screen here looks really sharp. It's very nice. But the 360 degree camera visuals, not really. It just cheapens the car. I don't like that. These are the PVC mats that come together with the optional urban package. Which, in my opinion, looks a bit tacky, don't you think? Those triple mats that I brought look so much better than this. Two of the things I like about this car. If you've forgotten to close your windows and your sunroof, don't worry, just walk away, lock the door, and it will do the rest for you. You can remotely start the car using the key fob. With the car already locked, press the lock button and hold on to the remote engine start button for a few seconds. And voila! Fancy, eh? To shut down the car, hold on to the remote engine start button and it will go off. You can do that using the Proton Link app as well. 007 stuff. This X50 flagship variant comes with the fancy voice command system where you can do all fancy stuff with it. Hi, Proton. Hi there. I want to see the sky. Okay, the sunroof has been opened for you. Hi, Proton. I'm here. 
close all windows. Okay, the window has been closed for you. What on? Whoa, solid. Hi, Proton. Open the sunshade. Okay, the sun current has been opened for you. Like a boss. The engine of the X50 is probably something that you want to pay a bit more attention to because Proton is giving you one cylinder lesser than the usual four cylinders. Yeah, this runs on three cylinders only. But hear me out you're actually getting an award-winning turbocharged 1.5-litre three-cylinder direct injection engine or they call it the TGDI engine. It is paired to the seven-speed dual-clutch gearbox, same as the one from the CKD X70. It makes 177 horsepower and 255 newton meters of torque. It gets you from 0 to 100 in 7.9 seconds, supposedly, but you probably know that already. This powertrain is a product of a 13 billion ringgit R&D investment by Geely over the last 10 years. Developed by China Euro Vehicle Technology or CEVT, a joint venture between Geely and Volvo, it was awarded the China Automotive Industry Science and Technology Award by China's Society of Automotive Engineers, the entity's highest honour, which is said to be like a Nobel Prize for the automotive industry in China. As for the other variants, the standard, executive and premium, they all get lower engine output from the same 1.5-litre turbocharged three-cylinder engine but using a multi-point injection system. So you get 150 horsepower and 226 newton meters of torque from the same gearbox. All four variants are front-wheel drive by the way. So with the direct injection engine in the flagship model, you actually get 27 horsepower and 29 newton meters more as compared to the other variants and it's a bit more fuel economical as well at 6.4 liters per 100 kilometer but that's only 0.1 liter per 100 kilometer lesser. I know what you're gonna ask, why a three-cylinder engine? More cylinders equals more power and a smoother engine, no? Well, because of strict emission standard all around the world. With one cylinder lesser, the engine can become smaller, the car becomes lighter and you use less fuel to move it, hence less emission as well. Need more power out of it? Just turbocharge it. However, there is a characteristic that I don't quite like about a three-cylinder engine, which is the sound and the vibration. It sounds like a diesel engine and it usually will vibrate until the steering wheel falls off. That's due to the uneven firing order because of the odd-numbered pistons. But in here, you can hardly tell that it is a three-cylinder engine running in there. What Geely and Volvo did to overcome the vibration is with clever use of up to 120 parts like engine vibration dampener, counterweighted crankshaft, dual mass flywheel with centrifugal pendulum absorber damper. Whoa, whoa, okay, we'll leave all the details in our explain video next time to tell you guys more. But you do get what I mean, right? You can actually hardly hear it or feel it from in here. Only maybe when you are getting off from standstill really slowly, you get to feel that judder. This flagship model comes with a long list of safety features too. Apart from the standard 6 airbags, ABS, EPD, traction control and all that, you also get level 2 autonomous driving features. It can somewhat drive by itself by using a millimeter wave radar and high definition cameras. This advanced system includes intelligent cruise control, auto park assist with support for both parallel and perpendicular parking, adaptive cruise control with stop go functionality, lane keep assist, lane departure warning, blind spot information system, intelligent high beam control, autonomous emergency braking, and forward collision warning. But it does come with a few drawbacks. Yeah, it can drive itself to a certain extent, it follows the car in front of you, it stays within the lane, but not as well as a Volvo. It can't handle a bend or corner very well, it will just ping pong its way between the lines and sometimes get off the line as well. But then again, you're not supposed to take your hands off the wheel when the system is activated. That's why it's called a level 2 autonomous driving. Another thing I realized though, there's a very apparent click clacky sound when the car is braking and releasing the brake for you. It's as if there are uh, like a few Chinese fellas inside the car helping you brake and release brake manually. Yeah, I, I shouldn't say that. 
The display on the digital meter can be quite entertaining when the system is activated too. It shows you cars passing by on left and right, but mainly when the car is already in front of you. It would be great if they can incorporate blind spot monitoring here to show you cars within your blind spots. Here's the best part. When you accelerate, the little car in the visual goes on hyperdrive mode. <laughs> I like that. So, how does it drive? Off the bat, it is comfortable. The seats are comfortable, the seating position is nice, the way they absorb bumps is very well. I mean, like expensive kind of well. Is it fast though? Yes, it is fast. Put it on sport mode, bloody hell, this thing goes. Now, don't be stupid, okay? It is not A45 fast, fast, but for a compact SUV, this segment, this thing is quick. Put your foot down, it gives you a squeak, you get a little wheel spin, and it will just take you to 120, 150 without you even knowing. I'll quickly run through with you the different driving modes. There is Eco, Normal, and Sport. So on Eco mode, there's this unnatural feeling of it pulling you back just to save you a bit of fuel. On Normal mode, it's a lot better, a lot more natural. It's very smooth and it can be very quick as well if you want it to. It is fast, but when you go fast in it, you sense a big butt coming, eh? You hear whistling noise from the windows. Yeah, and that's quite irritating, all this wind noise. And then you realize the steering wheel stops talking to you. The car feels light and it goes all floaty. It makes you feel nervous because you can't really feel the grip from the wheel. And that doesn't give you that confidence to stay on that speed, even though this is fast. But when you're not going fast in it, the power delivery is good. Enough for you to go uphill, overtaking, overtaking while going uphill, this is good. But it does take a while to respond when you put your foot down because of turbo lag. Once you're in the city, everything just comes together really well. The steering feel is nice, the ride is good, the power delivery is very smooth. You do feel the three-cylinder engine judder here and there, but that's not really a big deal for me. Both X70 and this X50 made Proton look like they have come a long way. I do wonder, just how can a rebadge exercise be so successful and be so well accepted by all? Remember Proton's old rebadging days with the Inspira, the Ecodana, the Atiga, Pachi Machi, Auntie Uncle, Keyboard Warriors, all condemning the brand, accusing them for the lack of imagination, the lack of initiative. But now, Pachi Machi, Auntie Uncle, all queuing at the showroom, placing booking. Keyboard Warriors? singing praises. What just happened here? Is it because of the looks of the car? Is it because of the build quality that you see? Is it because the brand association with Geely and Volvo? Is it because just pure sense patriotism to want to support our first national car? Or is it just because of the low price tag? Now just take a moment and imagine, what if this car costs 30,000 ringgit more? Would you still go all gaga about it? Or you would just walk away from the queue at the showroom? Let us know. Leave a comment below. So, is it worth the hype? From what I can tell, yeah. I would even go to the extent of saying to my fellow Malaysians, Rugi kalau tak beli, bro. So, is this car for you? Well, if you have only about 100,000 ringgit to spend on a compact everyday car and you want to get your money's worth, then yes, because really, you can't get anything else like this anywhere else with that kind of money. But if you're not into SUVs, you seek substance in a drive and perhaps the logo of the car you drive is important to you, then probably not. If you want to find out more about this Proton X50, do log on to autobus.my. If you like our video, do give us a thumbs up, share and subscribe to our channel by clicking on the logo or the subscribe button below. And please turn on the notification bell to receive updates whenever we upload a new video like this. And do support us by purchasing our t-shirts at autobus.shop.